How is it, gents? Welcome to GUX, and this is Napoleon's first victory, Siege of Toulon, 1793, by the channel Epic History TV. Yes, yeah, one of the first uh, cities that I did when I started the channel, I think, was in Napoleonic cities. But it, it was when I started the channel, and I don't know, lots of videos from the past, you know, I did it for a certain reason here and there. When I started the channel, you know, I, I wasn't looking for what are the YouTube guidelines, this and that. Right? When my channel grew, then I realized there are certain guidelines, this and that. So I deleted lots of my videos. The Napoleon series was most of that was deleted. Only past three or four videos left on the channel. But it's been so long, and it was one of my first series, you know. So so after after that I've watched so much history. So I guess I'm gonna have a new perspective. So I'm yeah, doing this again. There are twenty eight videos, apparently. I forgot about that, but yeah, damn, it was long in the Napoleon War series. One of the best series done by Epic History TV, I guess. So yeah, let's do this one. An Epic History TV History March collaboration, supported by our sponsor, Osprey Publishing. In the summer of 1793, the French Revolution was entering its fourth year, and France was on the verge of anarchy. In Paris, political extremists had seized control of the revolution. Robespierre, yeah. They guillotined the king and imposed a reign guy. of terror that dealt summary justice to all suspected enemies of the revolution. Hoping to unify the new republic, France's leaders had declared war on the Habsburg Empire. But the conflict quickly widened and soon France was facing the combined might of Europe's leading powers, determined to stamp out her dangerous political... Yeah, this is kind of hard to watch, right? One country attack other than everybody joined in. That's the case with literally all wars, World War I, World War II. As well. World War II was kind of straightforward, but it was because of World War I, and this is what happened in World War I, basically. So that kind of became too close to home in, I guess, recent time. Right, I mean, it st still can happen in the future, who the fuck knows, but yeah, entire world war could begin. Experiment. Meanwhile, whole regions of France had come out in open revolt, horrified by the new extremism of the revolution. In August, the Republic suffered a further, potentially fatal blow, when the city of Toulon joined the revolt. Toulon was France's largest and most important naval base in the south, home to a third of the entire French navy. But now, rebels welcomed their old enemy, the British Royal Navy, into the Imagine port, that. led by Admiral British? Lord Hood, aboard HMS Victory. It was an extraordinary coup. Without a shot being fired, the Allies had crippled French naval power in the Mediterranean and gained a vital toehold on the French coast. All French forces in the area were immediately diverted to face this new threat and lay siege to the rebel port. 19,000 troops in all, but since most French officers had been aristocrats who were now fleeing the revolution in large numbers, they were seriously short of professional leadership. Their commander, General Jean-Francois Carteau, was a loyal Republican, but a court painter by trade, with no military training. To him, okay. To make matters worse, one of his few professional officers, his artillery commander, Colonel Don Martin, had been badly wounded on the approach to Toulon. Antoine Salicetti, a Corsican deputy of the National Convention in Paris, recommended as his replacement a fellow countryman, a 24-year-old artillery officer who was passing Toulon en route to the front. Imagine that, right? You're uh, basically, you know, the commander is uh, some painter or something, right? No military experience. Everything's fucked up and Napoleon's like, I'm coming, right? And then Napoleon shows his genius during this time. How the fuck anybody's gonna ignore that, right? That's gonna be all the way up to the people's face. Like, look at that. Everybody was inexperienced fucks, but Napoleon came out. Named Napoleone Buonaparte or Bonaparte. Bonaparte was a professional soldier 
but he'd seen almost no active service. Nevertheless, Salicetti was impressed by his manner, and most of all, his politics. Bonaparte had just written a political pamphlet, a short story about a young artillery officer who berates his fellow diners for their disloyalty to the Republic. General Carteau thought it wise to accept Deputy Salicetti's recommendation. Damn, that's a strong ship. The great port of Toulon was well defended by city walls, and a dozen outlying forts and redoubts. They were held by 2,000 British soldiers and sailors, 6,000 Spanish troops, 6,000 Neapolitans, and 800 Sardinians. Artillery would be the key to overcoming these formidable defences. But when Bonaparte was put in command of the artillery on the 16th of September, he found himself with few cannon, not enough trained gun crews, and a shortage of gunpowder and shot. With relentless energy and determination, Bonaparte transformed the situation, requisitioning unused guns, training infantrymen to work them, setting up a new forge and workshop, and arranging transport from Marseille of 100,000 sandbags for constructing new batteries. Through hard work, he was ultimately able to build his force up to 64 officers and 1,500 men, manning 100 cannon, howitzers and mortars. Within days, Bonaparte had established... Yeah, this is straight out of a fucking video game story, isn't it? I mean, come on, look at this. Everybody's in inexperience. So is Napoleon, but Napoleon now has a chance to show what he can do. He has a massive challenge, taking on the town of you know Toulon, but it's all surrounded and fortified around it. So just getting to the town itself is a challenge. So if you win this, that's like, you know, do you need anything more after that, right? People will be like, holy shit, this, this was some big victory. ...published two new forward batteries with good revolutionary names, La Montagne and Sans Culottes, which brought Toulon's inner harbour within range, and forced Admiral Hood to move all his ships closer to the port. Bonaparte also came up with a plan, one that would allow the French to bypass most of Toulon's defences, and secure the rapid victory the Republic so desperately needed. Bonaparte argued that if Fort Leguilette could be captured, which looked out across the harbour, he could fill it with heavy guns and shell the British and Spanish fleet at anchor. Admiral Hood would be forced to abandon the port and take with him the Allied soldiers that Toulon relied on for its defence. General Carteau saw the merits of Bonaparte's plan and on the 22nd of September... Oh my god, how smart is that, right? I mean, destroy that exit. Of course they're going to run away. They're not going to say, like, fuck it, destroy ourselves if we're going to stay in Toulon. Then what? What if you have to run away now? Right, how are you going to run away? Nobody's going to sacrifice that exit. So I guess most of the British soldiers are going to try to run away if that happens, because that exit is, you know, basically compromised there. Remember, French forces attacked Montcaire. But to Bonaparte's exasperation, while he'd argued for an attack by 3,000 men, the indecisive Carteau committed only 400. Not only was the attack easily repulsed, but it alerted the Allies to the danger. Within 48 hours they'd reinforced Montcaire with thousands more troops, and built a new fort named Fort Mulgrave bristling with 20 cannon. The position was now so hours. strong, the French nicknamed it Little Gibraltar. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> Finally, in mid-November, an experienced professional soldier arrived to take command of French forces, really looks the town, the General Dugomier. He saw at once that Bonaparte's plan was the only way to take Toulon, and gave it his full backing. Bonaparte, promoted to Major, got to work. 
overseeing construction of several more batteries in preparation for the decisive assault. One forward battery was so exposed to enemy fire that men refused to be sent there. So Bonaparte renamed it La Batterie des Hommes Sans Peur, the Battery of Men Without Fear. And suddenly there was no shortage of volunteers. It was an early display of Napoleon's genius for inspiring his soldiers. One that would serve him well in the years ahead. On the 30th of November, the Allied Land Forces commander, British General Charles O'Hara, tried to seize back the initiative, leading an assault on the new French batteries facing Fort Malbousquet. At first the attack was successful, the batteries were overrun, and the French guns spiked. But a counter-attack with much greater numbers, and led in person by General Dugommier and Major Bonaparte, drove back the Allies. General O'Hara himself was shot through the hand and captured. Twelve years before, he'd surrendered to George Washington at Yorktown during the American War of Independence. Okay. Now, he got to surrender to Napoleon Bonaparte. <laughs> I like how we basically... <laughs> he's like, oh shit, not again, I have to surrender again. Poor guy. But. In the early hours of the 18th of December, in howling wind and driving rain, the French launched a major assault on Fort Mulgrave. The wet conditions made muskets useless except as clubs or with bayonets. Bonaparte led the second wave in person. Amid fierce hand-to-hand -hand fighting, his horse was killed under him, and he was bayoneted in the thigh by a British sergeant a wound that came within inches of ending his life and radically changing the course of history. Yes, is the, imagine that. Finally, the Allied garrison was overwhelmed, and Mulgrave fell to the French. Fort Leguilet and Tour de la Balakière were soon also in French hands. By the following afternoon, the French had ten heavy guns in Le Guilette, placing the Allied ships within range. Admiral Hood could not expose his valuable ships of the line to such a threat. He had no option but to order an immediate evacuation of the fleet and garrison from Toulon. Small Spanish and British teams raced to destroy all the French ships and naval stores that they couldn't take with them. But amid the chaos of their departure, 18 ships of the line were allowed to fall back into French hands. A badly missed opportunity. Many French citizens of Toulon were desperate to escape aboard the Allied ships knowing that the Republicans would inflict terrible oh, yeah. reprisals on the city. British and Spanish ships took as many as they could, about 14,000 in all, but scores were drowned amid chaotic and desperate scenes. Others were left to face the wrath of the revolution. See, this is why throughout the history, lots of time, where even when people are, I guess, you know, suppressed all around, right? They don't agree with who's in power. They don't as accept some foreign, you know, uh, help like that. Because they know foreign help could just fuck off. And in the end, we are going to be even more screwed now, which is going to happen to these people, right? I mean, after everybody just leave, obviously Napoleon and, you know, the whole, uh, the everybody just basically French government or whatever is gonna basically I think point blank punish them right like how can you betray the country with this and that Republican troops entered the city the next morning and executions and firing squads began almost immediately yeah, for fuck's sake for the next two weeks 
About 200 were executed every day. You and the kids come Allied on. propaganda later blamed Bonaparte for the atrocities, but there's no evidence he was directly involved. France's young republic was now fighting back on all fronts. And with the fall of Toulon, the Allies had lost a golden opportunity, a chance to stir up further revolt, deal a lasting blow to French naval power, perhaps even overturn the revolution. But instead, the French Republic had weathered one of its greatest storms. In no small part, thanks to the remarkable judgment, energy and courage of one 24-year-old artillery officer, now promoted Brigadier General in recognition of his extraordinary service at Toulon. Napoleon Bonaparte had taken his first step on the path to greatness. And for Europe, 21 years of almost constant war awaited. Our sponsor, Osprey Publishing, has nearly 200... Yeah, <laughs> this is such a fucking ridiculous thing. Napoleon in his first proper battle, right, as a major. And basically by the end of it was promoted a brigadier general title. I mean, that's just a, as big step as you can take. But yeah, knowing how the most of, the, uh, most of his military were in inexperienced, Napoleon being smart like that, right, I mean, his strategy is the one that won the war, won the battle, basically. Uh, cutting off that exit was the most smartest thing anybody could have done. So yeah, obviously people are like, oh yeah, let's get, make him Brigadier General. Yeah. All right, people, that was Napoleon's first victory, Siege of Toulon, 1793. Next time we're going to see Austerlitz, 1805, pretty important battle in Napoleonic history, I guess. So yeah, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like, subscribe, check out the reaction, I did this, link in the description, check out the cards, check out the cards, and yeah, I'll see you next time.